abrupt. What's going on, guys? The oh god. <clears throat> nope. What's going on, guys? The Inhuman Beatdown. I'm back with a new thing. This is Monster Prom Dower XL. Which is kind of like a stat building visual novel choice. I don't know how to classify this. But I'm not here, but I'm not alone. I have the me inside of me. Also, Krim. He's now here in person. Yee. You sound better. You don't sound like you're on a phone mic anymore. Or headset mic. Yeah. Alright, so we've played this game a little bit before. It's fucking hilarious. Yeah. So, for the basic understanding of this, with Monster Prom Double XL, it is basically a bundle of the original Monster Prom and also its expansion called Second Term. Second Term adds a bunch of other stuff. Two additional characters to romance, as the main plot of this is literally trying to get to prom with a date. And we're all monsters. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> not gonna go there. Um, but yeah, so it can be played up to four players. It can be played single player. It's uh, got a lot of content to it. I think for, we're gonna do a couple games and then a bunch more games. But at least for the first one, going to do class, actually might alternate classic, second term, classic, second term. Just cause there is stuff in classic that we can't do in second term. So let's do this. Two player. Classico. Short game. You're full. Share. Uh, spooky high school. The sweetest years of our lives. Or unlives for some. <laughs> Back then, we were young and unafraid. Sometimes reckless. Sometimes brilliant. Sometimes just stupid. But always willing to live life to the fullest. Live moss. We're on a wild journey to discover who we really were. Who are you? Uh... Yeah, sure. Light it up. Here you go. I can do this. And we had yet to experience its ultimate challenge, the Monster Prom. I remember it clearly. Three weeks were left, and as, and as we fantasized about our dream prom dates, we were all scrambling to catch the attention of one of our six most charismatic classmates. Huzzah! Miranda Vanderbilt, 19, a sweet mermaid princess who was as cute as she was genocidal. Damien LeVay, 21, a fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love of fire. Best girl. <laughs> Scott Howell, 21, a werewolf athlete who compensated for his rather small brain with a stupidly huge heart. He's... <laughs> Liam de Lioncourt, 4XX? can't tell if he's supposed to be a hipster because he's using Roman numerals or not. A hipster vampire whose standoffish demeanor hid that he was actually truly a lovable dork. Yay! Polly Geist, 22? Question mark. A party ghost with an insatiable hunger for all the wrong things. What? And Vera Oberlin, 23, a mean self-made gorgon with a merciless sense of business. It was clear, it had to be one of them. But who? But not really, but maybe. That's actually an option. There are actually a lot that require you to go solo. That's that's how you get a lot of this. Okay, so here's the fun thing. There's a ton of like secret endings to this. Krim hasn't looked up any of them. I did. <laughs> 
I also don't remember how to get most of them. And a lot of them are just, hey, you might run into this event. <laughs> little energon and a lot of luck. All right, we only had three weeks to choose our prom dates, and even more daunting, we only had three weeks to woo them and conquer their hearts. But as I already said, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. Welcome to the Monster Prom's stupidest pop quiz ever. All minds are rotten, but they are rotten in so many different ways. Worry no more, we're now using our PhD in bullshit to diagnose which kind of deviant sicko you are. Monster Prom's stupidest pop quiz ever, trademark, will throw a bunch of absurd questions at you and turn your answers into your character stats. This way, each of you will start by having stats that better reflect your true selves. Let's start. You wish you were raised by a pack of wild wolves, who also happen to be tech moguls who own some of the most profitable companies of Silicon Valley. That'd be kick-ass role models. And wild wolves. Sick. A really progressive marriage between a kick-ass venomous snake and actual fire. I love fire, and I see no issue with being raised by it. A mysterious old man who saved me from the streets in order to raise me as his disciple in the ancient ways of rad DJing. I'm wealthy. Which is the coolest mythological creature? <laughs> this weird creature I drew when I was six, which is clearly super de uh, derivative from other mythological creatures, but it's super cool and it's my OC and my spirit animal, okay? The invisible hand of the free market. A sphinx, who's super turned up and ready to party, and she wraps all her riddles. She still kills you if you don't answer them correctly, but she wraps the riddles. Hell yeah, we're so wealthy. <laughs> what criteria would you use uh, to name your children? <laughs> the second. After their name, something simple and friendly like Bobby or Mary. I will research for a name that is pun-proof and joke-proof. No one will ever pick on them. Just a swear word. A non-heteronormative -hetero name to give them freedom to define themselves on their own terms. No name, just too much work. Ah. <laughs> uh... Yeah, the last one is always like extra points towards someone. Second term is actually better about this because they give you two pages to give you chances to uh, get people's points. Yeah. The only one I can figure out here is the, uh, what just a swear word is probably Damien. gonna live like we're gonna die young let's make the most of this night like we're gonna die young yeah probably let's do this all right uh wow I have no good stats yeah, I do uh <sighs> that day during recess, you start a half hour rave that goes full crazy. You have no idea how it escalates so much, but at one point there are like 300 people. So on someone's demons from a nightmarish dimension, and the consequences might distort the fabric of reality itself, but who cares? It's a rad party. You gain plus two fun. That's not the stat I was hoping for. Oh no, wait. You go about your day. You can't help but notice Damien and Scott trying to uh, beige business, trying on beige business suits. By the time you get over to them, they've both taken the suits off and are examining them critically. Some still in right. Mm. Yeah, I really don't want to half-ass our Poke Pokemans cosplay. Coach says to always use your full ass on everything. Yeah, I'm with you, man. Nobody gives more of a shit about the classic pocket humans video game than me. Oh, I get it. Pocket Mans. Oh, oh, ah. <laughs> what the fuck are we missing, man? 
Got the suits, the horn-rimmed glasses, the sickly pale body paint. Everything we need to play cosplay Doug and Wilbert. <laughs> Twin Titans of Real Estate! I know they are, Scott. I've played the damn game. Now come on, help me think of what we're missing. You know right away what their costumes need. Reach into your bag and pull out the one thing no human would be caught dead without. A gun! Aw, I'm not bold enough. Aw, oh, sick, a real gun! What kind of bullets does this baby have? Let's see. Why is your gun loaded with silver bullets? <laughs> some kind of... Some kind of slayer? Oh, fuck! Maybe this one is a human in disguise. <laughs> well, one way to find out. Tear off the skin and see what's underneath. Then we turn them into a costume. They don't quite manage to tear your skin off and wear you like a suit, but they sure do try. You lose plus two smart, plus minus two smarts, and one boldness. Hell yeah. Still like the gun. <laughs> that day you spent some time on the library's PC mining some bitcoins. Dramatization. This is supposed to have something to do with solving algorithms and the rise of cryptocurrency. But you guess that nobody actually has any fucking idea how it really works. No one does. Anyway, you gain plus two bitcoins, which is equal to like two million dollars. Which unfortunately is equal to two monster dollars, so plus two money. I'm rich. That night you hit the clubs with Vera and Polly. Thank Satan for fake IDs. It's Polly time! Put those wallets away, you two. Drinks are on me. By which I mean, drinks are on that guy. <sighs> no need, Polly. I'm into this crazy new thing called paying for my own drinks. Maybe you've heard of it. <laughs> Maybe. Is that French for my boobs aren't big enough to get free drinks? God damn it. I think Polly just got a big tit for a ghost. Yeah. Feminism is dead. <laughs> that sounds like a reason to drink. BRB. God damn it. What soon? Huh? It, it didn't work? Just give up. What was that you said? It sounded like Portuguese for my shameless pandering didn't get us any free drinks. <laughs> This is quickly getting out of control. Maybe if you find a way to make that guy pay for your drinks, you can fix this. Uh, sorry. Sedate the guy when he's in the bathroom, put a pair of sunglasses on him, and pretend he's your pal. It's crime time. Kidnapped his daughter and demand drink. Oh my god. The sad part is I can't tell which one this is supposed to cater to. They both sound pretty poly to me. Excellent question. I think bottom one sounds more bold. No boldness. You have fun, though. Party time sounds fun. <laughs> no one is curious why you just happen to have sedatives on you at all times. Don't worry about it. The plane goes off without hitch. You spend the whole week with your new friend, Sedated Sam. That's some Weekend at Bernie's bullshit. Sedated <laughs> Sam. The coolest dude in the universe. He's such a good listener. That has been. I especially quite like pleasing. how he insists on paying for everything with his credit card. What a gentleman. It's the best week of your lives, but sadly it has to end. The three of you bid sedated Sam a tearful do it bye. So well. Bye! <laughs> Goodbye, Sam. I'll always remember the times we spent together, even if you won't. It seems sedated Sam truly slept his way to the top of our hearts. You all promise to do this again next year. Sam might not remember which of this, uh, much of this when you wake up, but you're sure he'll love watch, uh, love the matching tattoo you all got. You gain plus two bonus, plus one fun. Hell yeah. Everybody choose an object. Say your choice out loud for the rest of the players before clicking. A knife. A lightsaber, but it deploys in the shape of a dildo. Genies used to be found in lips. Player, uh, player orders decided based on how likely it would be to find a 21st century genie inside the selected object. Well, considering lightsabers don't exist. They kind of do. Loosely. The knife actually exists. Hit the random. 
maybe. Or would he be in a lightsaber that deploys in the shape of a dildo? Fuck you, that's what. All right. Hear me out, you should go talk with Polly. No reason. Would want to save money for the whatevers. Yep. All right, well, fuck you. You ruined what I was gonna go for. The present. Nah, I got other plans. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Amira, you could totally sit with us. I just hope you didn't bring a gun to a bazooka fight. <laughs> yeah, we're showing off our best flasks. Well, not the best flasks exactly, but the best contents. Good God, our literal actual flasks of alcohol openly allowed in the school cafeteria. Are there no rules? Apparently not, because Polly starts setting a series of flasks down on the table. Okay, so this is my beer, my WC wine, whiskey, <laughs> ethyl alcohol, the soul of an infant. Weak. This is radioact radioactive abstentine. This is fire. And this is literal poor life choices. Okay, but this one has another smaller flask inside. It is the ultimate flask. I could probably go on like this for goddamn ever. I love that that's an actual word. Maybe you can cut in with the craziest thing of all. Think carefully about whom you want to impress with your flask contents. Could she? I wonder which is which. All right. Get ready for the most hardcore badass thing. This flask contains an ancient genie that grants you three wishes, but I'm totally drinking it because I don't give a fuck. I grant my own damn wishes. Yep, you're right. Hardcore. So hardcore. You could ask for anything. Wealth, power, immortality. A free pass for teachers to ignore bad behavior forever and let you do whatever the fuck you want without supervision. No suspension, whatever. But instead, you're just gonna drink the genie? It's like you've... <laughs> it's like you've drunk from my poor life choices flask. And I love it. I didn't even know you could drink a genie. You and Damien pop open the flask and drink the genie together. It's definitely just water, but Damien seems to drink so much alcohol and energy drinks that he's literally forgotten what water tastes like. Normally, you'd say that couldn't possibly be healthy, but fuck it, he's a demon from hell. He can probably do whatever. What a glorious bonding experience. Everybody chooses a movie. Say your choice out loud to the rest of the players before clicking. Die Hard. That is not a Star Wars movie. It's still a movie. No, wait, that's the Phantom Pain. Menace. Menace, Menace. Players determined by how hard it would be to explain this selected movie to an old person. God damn it! Day, uh, that day you skip class and just hang out in the bathrooms because you respect no authority. I guess some people just want to watch the world burn. By skipping class and hanging out in the bathrooms. You give plus zero shits, but you gain plus two boldness. But that day you're shopping with Vera and Polly when a wild cockatrice appears. It is a giant chicken with the tail of a snake and can turn people to stone with its breath. It gallops through the mall, biting shoppers with its jagged beak and turning them to stone. Scott and Damien come chasing after it, holding a butterfly net in a frilly dress. This isn't our fault! We had nothing to do with this! 
Ugh, another mythical, mythical creature crisis. Just when I'm starting to enjoy my shopping. Aw, oh, but it's so cute! I bet that vicious chicken dragon really knows how to party! Scott and Damien see everyone looking at them and wisely hide inside a clothing rack. What are you gonna do about this creature? Oh, you're not charming enough. You unwrap the delicious Cinnabon treat you were saving for later and present it to the cockatrice. It sniffs it once, and then it, uh, its eyes go wide with rage. You tried. <laughs> you idiot! Everybody knows cockatrices are allergic to gluten. But it's too late. The cockatrice bites you, and you turn to stone. Your friends find a wizard to turn you back again, of course. But then rumors got started that you missed class to get stone, so you get detention. You lose minus two funds and minus one smarts. Oh, Let's do this. <sighs> All right, what have we got? Hey, stranger. Uh, let's see. Since you took my plan. Plug it. Thanks. Gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> I'm so rich. You can buy that thing now. Wow. <laughs> oh. That weekend. Something happened to. Let's do this. You're engaging in your favorite weekend activity, ignoring everything and anything in favor of thinking about which classmate you'd like to take to prom and how horny you are. When you find out that this is apparently reading on your face. <laughs> hey, Mary, you seem pretty horny like someone who sits around all day thinking about who you're going to take to prom. Wow, does she have your number or what? Listen, I'm kind of interested in someone, but honestly, I don't think I could be with any monster who isn't spectacular at sex. I know sex isn't everything, but it's sort of everything to me. Not really, but it's pretty high on my list of priorities. Sorry if this is TMI. Titillating monster interaction. But it's someone you know, so I thought you might have some insight. It's Oz. I just love sex. Any position, missionary, clergy, apocalyptic, upside down, nightmare demon, the pentagram. The first one's actually real. What do you think? Could Oz keep up with me? So I asked them they thought sex was about don't ask me why, and they told me that it was the natural process for most living to they have no idea. So rich. At least I'm one fun. Well, misery likes company. <laughs> what? That's wild. That makes no goddamn sense and is also super ghost exclusive. You can't shut Poltergeist out of the pleasure of the flesh just because we don't have flesh. Yeah, no, I definitely can't put up with that kind of misconception. I'm not running a tutoring program here. You're either on my level or not. And it sounds like Oz is definitely not. Thanks for sharing intimate details of their personal life with me without their permission. You're kind of a shitty friend, huh? Yeah, but I'm rich. I'm Miranda. I mean, she's not exactly wrong, but boy, was that hilarious. Hashtag worth it. And you gain plus one fun. Yeah. Everybody choose an occupation. Say your choice out loud. Gynecologist. 
Their orders dedicated on how boring a VR simulator based on the selected occupation would be. Well, god damn it. I don't know. You know there would be a lot of people that fucking uh, play VR just so they can see a vagina. It's the most expensive thing in here. Catch you later. All right. That day you listen to your elders and learn valuable lessons. Sometimes, after all the monster nonsense and the dating gimmicks, you forget that attending class is supposed to be the primary activity at this high school. You gain plus two smarts. Bitch. You spot Miranda and Scott in the vicinity. It seems like the perfect opportunity to test your new blanket. Oh, no. You wear it as if you're a goofy ghost and approach them with a spooky boo while Miranda is explaining something to Scott. And that's why those treacherous air airborne air people are the absolute worst and also most likely tied to the disappearance of Mars Argo. <gasps> oh, what's this? A ghost? Perhaps a foreign exchange student? Yeah. What are you talking about? Oh, gasp! I didn't see you there. So ghostly. You guys are joking, right? This is clearly just Oz wearing a blanket with eyes holes cut in it. Jealousy is a powerful fun candy, Liam. Do not become addicted. Yeah, Liam. You don't see anyone saying, oh, Liam is really just Oz wearing a blanket with eye holes cut in it. <laughs> Exactly, Liam, even despite the many times we suspected it was so. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, sorry, little ghost, we were ignoring you. <laughs> That's true. Tell us, do you have any cool ghost powers? Oh, no. oh yes, divulge, divulge! Spot a victim for your prank. The Coven. Yeah, wrong choice. You start running in the direction while screaming your best boo to date. What's this? Maybe it's a minion of Queen Helenia? Rumors say she's preparing to be the big bad of next season. Stop booing at us. It's hard enough as it is to save the world on a daily basis. Base, yeah, basis. We don't need people have it, uh, here undermining our morale. Stop booing! This school is unbelievable. They go running looking for a place to recover from all the booing and undermining. Oh no, what have we done? We made them miserable by forcing our little ghost friend to haunt them with its ghost powers. You do realize they just ran at them while booing, right? The only thing I realize is that too much ghost power in our hands has made us evil. We've got no time to lose. We need to start living lives of good deeds so we can be forgiven for this. You're right, Scott. Maybe in 10 or 20 years we can be redeemed for this moment of weakness. I hate you all. <laughs> At least you've led Miranda and Scott into a path of goodness. Nah, this has been a failure for sure. You lose two smarts in one fun. Everybody choose a brand. KFC. The fucker clothing brands. Uh, Nike. Or is this high based on how cool it would be to, uh, to live in a nation ruled by the selected brand? Oh, 
Nike Nation it is. It's just shoestrings. Let's do this! Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. If you like this video, be sure to leave it a like. And if you want to see more of my future content, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And to stay up to date with all of the releases that come out daily, be sure to click that bell. And if you're feeling a little bit generous, why not check out my Patreon page? Link is down in the description. And as always, until the next video, hasta.